It's heavy, isn't it? So it looks like SawStop does a really excellent job of making sure that you have all your parts laid out and that you know what to find and where to find it. So we're gonna pull this off. Tells you on both sides. Okay, so our very next step is to install these control wheels. They're parts one and two for steps two and three, so we're gonna punch these out, need a hex wrench, and we're gonna install them over on the saw. That just slides right over the key that you can see sticking up there. And then we're gonna put the hex screw in there. Set to how close you want it to the saw before you tighten it down. There are two of these. The shorter one goes on the side and the longer one goes in the front. With both of the elevation wheels installed, the next step is the dust port. I've already put it in there, but it was just hanging loose inside of here. And you have to make sure that you find the flat part and of course put that down so that it rests on the base of the saw. The next step is mounting the motor cover. So we're gonna be putting on the extension wings next and here's the trick that I've seen people use. Just take a board and clamp it down in place or it will support it for you. So I'm gonna use a couple more clamps right here. So now we're gonna punch out our bolts and washers for the table extensions. I've got my board in place over here and just to keep this in mind, they are not the same front and back. Uh, these two holes close together line up with the two holes, the two holes there. So when you put it on, Make sure that you're getting it in the correct orientation. That one feels good. That still feels like a gap. With the wings mounted on there, the next step is mounting the switch box. Okay, just for perspective, this wheel is of course the front of the saw, and we're gonna mount in those two holes the switch box. I'm just gonna get that ready by putting a screw through there, see if I can get it to just line up properly. With the switch mounted on the front, the next step is to mount the wrench and tool holders. Next up is the fence. So we have the bar assembly and the fence itself. All right, our first step is to mount the front rail with these bolts and it gives you instructions on how to set one half on the floor. I'm gonna use the uh, styrofoam that I still have over there. Punch out hardware pack. 
and then we'll unbox the table. So on this blue step, we're gonna use this adjustment bracket and the only place that it can screw in where they already have the threaded inserts in the table extension. These support pieces don't come inside the hardware pack, but they were packed in with the table. So we're gonna need these next with this step. Obviously this is the front of the saw and this is the rear of the saw. These get installed just like this in this countersunk hole right here. So you grab the table, put that adjustment screw underneath your extension wing and rest it on the brackets that you just installed like so. Don't forget to thread the lock nut onto here before you install them in the legs. To attach the legs, next we're gonna need these long bolts followed by these short bolts underneath them. So I made a mistake earlier and I wanna point it out uh, just in case anybody else makes this mistake. So we put in this bracket and then when I went to install the table extension, you're only supposed to secure it with the front bolt. This rear bolt is one of the long ones that is gonna go all the way through the leg and onto the bracket and down. So now I'm gonna take out the short bolt and replace it with the long one. Okay, then we're gonna replace it with the long bolt that goes through the leg as well. The other bolt that goes through the leg is the big beefy one with the nylon lock nut included. And the instructions also note that on the rear rail, you go through this middle hole, top, middle, bottom. But on the front rail, we're gonna use top, bottom. All right, I'm finally to the step where I'm gonna put the fence on. So that means we're on our last hex head bolts. And it says that each one of these also needs a lock washer. All right, folks, so uh, here we've come to the end of the video, and originally this video was not intended to show a brake change, but I've been using the saw for several weeks now, and uh, I did something that I've done on my old table saw plenty of times, and that was cutting some of that styrofoam insulation so that it fits between 24 inch centers. And I didn't even think about it, I've just run it through, you know, cutting it to the same size over and over on my old saw. Well, that material on the back is kind of a shiny silver and it's a conductive material and I didn't realize that. And so it was just one or two cuts in, I set off the brake and my heart just sunk when I saw that blade disappear. But I'm gonna use it as a learning opportunity. So I've got a new brake here and I'm gonna try and show you inside the saw just to show you how quick and easy this is supposed to be. I already got everything taken out of course. So here's the pin that you'll have to remove by turning it down and out. We're gonna lift the handle for the riving knife up out of the way. Line up this one first, right here. That's right underneath this handle. It's this black one right here. Goes in the big hole, just like that. Pin, down. So that's it. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you got something out of this. Feel free to leave a comment down below if you think I made a stupid mistake, but you're not gonna be any more upset about it than I was, and it was a learning experience. I will definitely think twice again before I 
make a, a cut on something that is conductive or before I decide to cut anything on this table saw. Uh, I hope you took something good from this video. If you feel like I've earned it, give me a like and a subscribe and I will see you next time in the Hubbard's Handmade Shop.